Are you aware that some foods may put you or your baby at risk? If your answer is no, here's an outline of some precautions you can take to decrease your risk of becoming ill. When you're pregnant, your immune system isn't functioning at full capacity, which puts you at risk or increased risk for foodborne illness. So we want to be careful about some of the things that you're consuming. Unpasteurized cheeses or high moisture content cheeses like brie, camembert, feta, also processed meats. You need to be careful about listeria. It's not something you can see, smell or taste. So we would suggest that if you are going to consume those products, make sure that you fully cook them before you consume them. Watching out for products or for foods that have undercooked eggs in them. And if you're going to eat eggs, then fully cook the egg yolk. You want to avoid uh, raw fish, raw shellfish like oysters or clams, uh, and anything that would be undercooked. If you're making things ahead of time or you're going to a place where they're going to have food out, make sure that things are held at the right temperature, that hot foods are really hot and that cold foods are kept cold. When you're preparing your foods, you want to be careful about cross-contamination as well so that we're avoiding getting sick from undercooked or uh, uncooked food. Caffeine in pregnancy really should be limited to about 300 milligrams per day and what that ends up working out to is about two eight ounce cups of coffee. Teas contain caffeine as well, but they're usually in smaller amounts. Green tea contains caffeine too, but it usually is in a little bit of a smaller amount than black tea. The sweeteners that you want to be careful about or to ask your health care practitioner about are sodium cyclamate and saccharin, which typically you'll see as a tabletop sweetener. Do you suffer from heartburn, constipation, nausea, or vomiting? Any one of these symptoms can make you less comfortable during pregnancy. If you're experiencing severe symptoms, they can have an impact on how well you eat. Dietitian Sylvia Blay offers some tips. For heartburn, one of the things that we suggest really is to uh, watch how much fluids you're consuming with your meals, maybe drink between meals, uh, lying on your left side rather than your right side, but not lying down too close to, to after meal times, watching the amount of mints, Fried fatty foods can also make heartburn worse, so it's best to kind of avoid those. Bubbly drinks, the carbonated beverages, and wearing tight clothing or tight things across the middle, so try to wear more loose clothing. If these strategies aren't working as well and you know, acids are going to be something you're looking at, then it's probably best that you talk to your pharmacist about the safest choices during pregnancy. For nausea and vomiting, one of the things we want to make sure is that mom doesn't get too hungry in between because sometimes just that feeling of hunger can lead to extra nausea. So eating every couple of hours might be helpful. Again, watching those fried and fatty foods. Having somebody else prepare meals because sometimes just the smells of cooking or being in a hot kitchen can end up making it worse. Cold foods might be more appealing. Sometimes sour things might be uh, better tolerated. And, and in the end, whatever you can keep down is, you know, you suggest that you eat whatever you can tolerate and once you start to feel better, then we can start adding those other things in again to make it more uh, nutritionally sound. And crackers can sometimes be helpful and what we suggest is putting them beside the bed and maybe nibbling on a few before you get out of bed to kind of help settle your stomach a bit. Getting out of bed slowly uh, is something else that might be helpful. Having fresh lemons by the bed, sometimes that can help to make you feel better as well. Making sure you've got some decent ventilation and avoiding heavy smells can also be important in terms of helping to keep that nausea and vomiting uh, down. The other thing that we can do at nighttime, if you're choosing a snack, look at having something from uh, like a protein or fat with a carbohydrate. So we're looking at the food guide, maybe peanut butter from the Meats and Alternatives group with some, some green products. Constipation can make, uh, make you feel very uncomfortable as well. And one of the things that you need to make sure that you are having enough fluids. And the other thing is making sure that you're getting enough fiber in your diet. So making sure you're getting those seven to eight servings of fruits and vegetables per day and looking at getting half of your grain products in as whole grain walking and fluids should be very helpful in helping to alleviate those symptoms.